Hi, I'm Mark, and today we need to talk again about this abomination of a deportation deal. British Home Secretary Braverman has held talks in Rwanda about her government's plan to bring illegal asylum seekers to the African country. Asylum seekers are not illegal, but they're way into the UK. Before leaving for Kigali, the Tory politician stressed that her migration policy would prove a strong deterrent to dangerous and illegal travel. London wants to stop illegal entry via the English Channel. An agreement concluded with Rwanda last year is part of their strategy. The asylum applications are to be processed there, but not for the UK, for Rwanda. People whose applications are approved should remain in Rwanda. The European Court of Human Rights stopped the first flight to Rwanda at the last minute in June. Last year, more than 45,000 people crossed the English Channel to Britain, compared to 8,500 in 2020. According to government sources, Sky News, the UK intends to repeat its plan to deport migrants to Rwanda, particularly due to the rising number of the irregular migrants entering the country via the English Channel. In Great Britain, which intends to implement the plan by the summer, Home Secretary Ruella Braverman and uh, Rwandan Foreign Minister Vincent Birute decided to expand the previous Memorandum of Understanding on Immigration and Economic Development Cooperation. Ho the Home uh, Office said that the two countries will continue efforts to resolve the global migration crisis. In the statement, which said that under the signed MOU, people will have been deported to Rwanda, will be supported in building their new lives, as Biruta said. Biruta reiterated that his country is ready to host uh, thousands of irregular migrants from England. We do not want people risking their lives by crossing the English Channel, Braverman said in the statement. Braverman also noted that Rwanda is a fast-growing, secure economy. Well but not a safe one. In his statement, Biruta argued that an urgent and innovative solution needed to be found to tackle the global migration crisis, saying, for these reasons, we are delighted to renew our commitment to our landmark partnership with the UK, which reflects our resolve to resolve the crisis, as his assessment is. The UK government, which has drafted legislation to prevent irregular migration from entering the country via the English Channel, plans to detain irregular migrants as soon as they arrive. According to the draft law, detained irregular migrants will be deported to their home countries or what they call safe third countries within 28 days without a judicial investigation. Illegal migrants who have been deported will make legal claims and apply for asylum after their deportation and even to, in Rwanda and not to the UK. Anyone who enters the country legally doesn't have the right to asylum, they say, but they are wrong. Britain has announced its aim of sending irregular migrants and asylum seekers who enter the country illegally to Rwanda under this Rwanda plan prepared last year. The Supreme Court found the plan to send immigrants to Rwanda illegal and on June, no, the, the uh, courts on human rights, and stopped it on uh, June 14, although there was a plane airbound for Rwanda almost. With the Rwanda plan garnering huge reactions around the world, England agreed to pay Rwanda 120 million pounds over five years to meet immigrant needs. In Britain, the government wants to stop immigration with those deportation practices, especially after the amounts of crossings in the last year. But there is a serious flaw in these plans, and they absolutely know it. The right to asylum is a fundamental human right recognized by international law, which grants protection to individuals who are flee fleeing persecution or serious harm in their home countries. Asylum seekers are people who have fled their own country due to persecution or fear of persecution based on their race, religion, nationality, political opinion or membership in a particular social group. They may seek asylum in another country in order to receive protection and avoid being returned to their home country where they could face serious harm. The right to asylum is enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees. 
These international instruments obligate countries to grant asylum to individuals who meet the criteria for refugee status and ensure that they are protected from refoulement or being returned to their country of origin where they could face persecution. In order to be granted asylum, an individual must demonstrate that they meet the legal definition of a refugee and that they have a well-founded fear of persecution in their home country. Asylum seekers may be required to undergo a legal process to determine their eligibility for asylum. Countries that are party to the 1951 Convention have an obligation to protect refugees and asylum seekers to provide them with access to basic rights and services such as education, health care and employment in their country. However, the implementation of these obligations can vary widely between countries and the process of seeking asylum can often be lengthy and complex, but it's always regarding the country they enter. Asylum seekers are entitled to certain rights and protections under international law. And here are some of the key rights that asylum seekers have. The right to non-refoulement, and this is the right to not be returned to their home country if they face a risk of persecution of har or harm. As I said, this is enshrined in the 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees and is considered a cornerstone of refugee protection. Then the right to seek asylum. Asylum seekers have the right to apply for asylum in any country they reach and countries are obliged to consider their claims in a fair and timely manner. The right to a fair and efficient asylum procedure is also one. Asylum seekers have the right to a fair and efficient process for determining their claims for protection from that country they reach. And this includes access to legal representation, interpretation and an opportunity to present evidence and have their case heard. And there's the right to freedom from detention. Asylum seekers should not be detained simply because they are seeking asylum. If detention is necessary, it should be for the shortest possible period and in humane conditions. And there's the right to basic rights and services. Asylum seekers are entitled to basic rights and services, including food and shelter and medical care. They should also have access to education and employment opportunities. And there's the right to family unity. Asylum seekers have the right to be reunited with their family members, including spouses, children and parents. And there's the right to freedom of movement. Asylum seekers should not be restricted in their movements within the country where they are seeking asylum. However, in practice, these rights are not always respected or upheld, as we can see in the UK plans now as well. And many asylum seekers face significant challenges and barriers to accessing them. Many countries have restrictive asylum policies and practices that made it, makes it difficult for asylum seekers to exercise their rights and access the protection they need. And the UK is joining these countries now. The right to asylum is a vital protection for people who are fleeing persecution and human rights abuses in their home countries. It's an essential element of the international human rights framework and is recognized by the majority of countries around the world. Asylum seekers, yes, must go through a rigorous process to prove that they meet the legal definition of a refugee and have a well-founded fear of persecution in their home country. And this process can involve interviews, document checks and other forms of investigation to establish their eligibility for asylum. And countries do have different systems for processing asylum claims and the quality of these systems can vary widely. Some countries have well-established systems that are fair, efficient and effective, while others have systems that are slow, inefficient and prone to errors. Does that remind you of some country? Once an individual is granted asylum, they are entitled to a range of rights and protections, including the right to work, access education and healthcare, as I said, and this freedom of movement. However, in practice, many asylum seekers face significant barriers too, and uh, their lives may be difficult and precarious. The right to asylum is also closely connected to other human rights issues, such as migration, discrimination and access to justice. 
There are many complex and interconnected factors that can drive people to seek asylum, including conflict, persecution, poverty, and environmental degradation. They're not all parts for the rights for asylum, but uh, to grant it. But as a fundamental human right, the right to asylum must be protected and upheld by all countries. However, this is often easier said than, do than done, and, and there are many challenges and obstacles that need to be overcome to ensure that asylum seekers are treated with dignity and respect and given the protection they deserve. And I have to repeat this. They have the right to apply for asylum in a country they reach. And they do reach the UK when they cross the English Channel. And then they have the right to apply for asylum in the UK and not in Rwanda. There's a lot flawed in our system here as well. Sending back people who are not eligible for asylum is the hugest problem we have here. But once again, I have to stress that many more asylum seekers and migrants arrive here in Germany than in the UK. And we continue to obey international law. And sending people to Rwanda without giving them their legal rights under the conventions with preventing them from applying for asylum in the country they reach, namely the United Kingdom. That is not reaching the borders of international law. It is breaking international law. And uh, that is not acceptable. And once again, a little reminder, the new channel Outside Views Games is online. The first played the game already the first one. The next one will come up on uh, April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke, but it's, it will always be on the first of a month. It's a lot of work to make these games, so there will be one per month. But maybe you want to have a look and play. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.